Now, machines which rule our lives are a constant theme of science fiction, but in all sorts of respects, they're reality, notably on the roads. The first traffic light is said to have been erected outside Parliament in 1868. In the 140 years since, traffic lights have spread across the nation like some form of multicolored acne. 14,000 road junctions are now controlled by them. They're said to be vital to our safety, but Martin Cassini doesn't think so. On a bus approaching King's Cross. It's outside rush hour, so we should sail through, especially if the claim is made about the congestion charge are true. But there's a reason why we're going nowhere fast. We complain about the traffic and blame other drivers, but could it be traffic controls that are the problem? There's too many red lights in London, I think. They need to be red for an eternity. They're a waste of time with traffic lights. Are we waiting too long for nothing? Traffic lights make us stop when it's safe to go, defying common sense, extending journey times and producing congestion which cost the economy 20 billion a year. Multiply the needless delay and restarts at traffic lights by the number of vehicles, the days, months and years, add the manufacture, installation and running costs and is it surprising that polar bears are running out of ice? Astonishingly, the current system by which we live and die has never been tested. Most of it was just invented in a fairly ad hoc manner and often without real consultation or testing. We're treating people like idiots, as if they don't know they have to drive on the right side of the road. What do you need all those different, well, signs and rules for? I think what we hate doing is being forced to do things that make no sense. And the ultimate cry against bureaucracy is that this doesn't make sense or it's wasting time if you're blindly told to obey something or do something and you can't see the reason for it. Or you, you've been given a reason but that reason is clearly defective. Or inappropriate for Inapp the context of the moment. What happens when controls are absent? Is there a breakdown of civilization as we know it? be a bit more careful on the junction, that's all. And what happened was that the dominance of the traffic fully took over the public space function and we have to rediscover that public space function. Here we are in Gossip Square as it's known in North Shopping Sweden. Tell me about this square, I mean we're just standing in the middle of the street. Yeah, but you're allowed to stand here because there are no regulations. It was a regular traffic crossing with traffic lights and quite a lot of accident reported. And now since it has been redesigned and the traffic lights are removed, there has been no accidents at all since September 2000. OK, motorists and able-bodied pedestrians might get on better without lights, but what if you're disabled or blind? Drivers hog the road, dominate the street environment. Now we've allowed them to do that by all our highway engineering things and so on. Let's start taking these things away. It might be traffic lights first, it might be road markings, the white line, all those sorts of things. And then look at what that does to driver behaviour and what it does to opening up the urban environment for pedestrians. When given a choice, the vast majority are naturally cooperative. 
trouble is, the current system removes choice. You can't even legislate for maniacs, so why hobble the vast majority with one-size-fits-all rules to catch the hypothetical deviant? Traffic controls treat the symptoms, never the cause. Most traffic control measures can be seen as attempts to cure the original sin, the cancer of priority. Remove it, and you remove the need for lights and the need for speed, enabling everyone to do what is natural and intrinsically safe. Instead of being held in limbo by the tyranny of traffic lights, all road users should be free to filter. People complain about cyclists ignoring lights, but most cyclists are simply going on opportunity, like pedestrians on wheels, which is what we all are and should all be able to do. At the very least, you can't argue on the emissions point and the pollution point. They're very bad traffic lights from that point of view. Certainly, there is a big question about whether traffic lights are the most effective way of managing traffic in an urban area. There's a common misconception that if you take away the lights, people are going to drive fast. Actually, the opposite is true. It's a counterintuitive idea, but it's the green light that encourages the speed, that licenses the aggression. If you take away the light and there's uncertainty at the junction, people naturally approach slowly and filter. That's just as we do. That is absolutely right, isn't it? People sit there at a traffic light, revving the engine, waiting to get away, and if they come up to a, light where, a junction where there's no light, they, they do go well, slowly. All the examples, though, that people can quote from Sweden or from the Netherlands are in very, very low traffic volumes. A new hierarchy emerges with vulnerable road users at the top. Pedestrians in the shared space scenario, when there are no lights to dictate behaviour, are seen as fellow road users rather than obstacles in the way of the next light. That's a fair point. That's isn't a it? Fair, very fair point, and of course, all motorists are pedestrians. <laughs>